In this section, we will learn how to implement a producer-consumer pattern using Python. Now, producer-consumer pattern is a classic synchronization problem. Now, it includes a producer thread, this one, and a consumer thread, this one. Now, the producer will produce certain data continuously, and the consumer will consume that particular data. Now, the producer will send that data through a shared buffer, and the consumer will read that data from the shared buffer. Shared buffer is usually a data structure like queue. So it will be usually a first in first out. The queue can also be a last in first out, LIFO queue also. So for implementing that, we have to use a queue. Now this paradigm, the producer consumer pattern happens a lot in programming. For example, we will have a producer thread that may be a serial port listening program or a network port which is listening to some data. So once the data starts to come, they will send that data to a consumer thread, which will either process the data or write into a file or something like that. So this can be useful for building a large variety of program. Uh, different methods are available. I mean, different patterns are available. Here we'll be using producer, one producer and one consumer. There can be other iterations like multiple producer, multiple consumers or multiple producers, single consumers or multiple consumers and single producer. All the permutations and combinations are available. So we'll go to the queue first one. We need to use a queue for this one. It is a first in first out data structure. Now for creating the shared buffer, we need a data structure called as a queue. Queue here is a first in first out data structure. Now it is present in the side the module Q. So we have to import that module. It is part of the standard library. So you can use that. And the Q start, start with the capital letter Q. Now there are other types of queues available in this module. For example, LIFO Q is also there, which is a last in first out queue. And we also have a priority queue. So the data that is sent in side is arranged in, depending upon the priority. So we will not be using any of these two. We will be using the first in first out data structure. That means that whatever data you put inside the queue, when you take it out, that data comes first. So first data that is put inside comes out first, just like in a normal queue. So uh, the other thing is that this is also thread safe. So you can use it in a multi-threaded setup. So I will use the code now. First we have to import the library. Then we'll create a queue. It's called queue. So queue you. Let's use the capital Q here. That is the first in first out queue. We'll create that queue. Now queue has some methods. Uh, to put data into one so the dot the method is called as put so we can put some data into this one let's put one then we'll put two then we'll put three so now the queue contains three numbers now we are going to take that numbers out so that you can use it by the get method. So you can just put q.get. So this is a first in first out data structure. So we put the number one as the first entry. So when you run the dot get, you will get the number one as the other one. Then you can get the So if you run it again, you'll get two. And if you run it again, you'll get three. So this is how a queue data structure works. Now we'll create a small program that will send data from a producer thread to a consumer thread. So we'll be starting the, this is the main thread and we'll be starting two threads and each are called as a producer and a consumer. Now we have a queue data structure, which is named as a shared buffer. So what the producer thread is, does that is that 
it will put some data uh, for example one in the loop so the first one will be put one and second one will be two like that 10 numbers will be put inside this one and then on the consumer side we will take that data one by one so whatever data is put in this order you can take it from this one so this is how it will work i'll run the code now this is the code for this one we have created two function one is called as the producer and the other one is called as the consumer and we have created a queue called shared buffer and then we have created two threads t1 and t2 and we will start both of them here now inside the producer we will produce some data for that we will use a for loop so we will run it 10 times so every time we run uh, we put some number into this one so it will be one then we will put this to sleep so once the loop is finished we will send a uh, null none value uh, this is like a termination character uh, we are or a sentinel value this means that the consumer thread can understand that no more data is going to come from the producer side that's why we will be sending the none value so we'll put it inside the thread so on the consumer side we will have an infinite loop so this is the infinite loop while true and we'll get the data one by one from the shared buffer and we'll store the uh, data in this particular variable and here whether it will, it will check whether the received data is equal to none if it is none it means that no more data is coming so it will break from here so if it is not none it will print the received data on the command line so i'll run it so we are printing it from the consumer thread this one i haven't written any print statement here because i just want to make sure I just want to show the logic only. If you want, you can add the print statements. So this is how you implement a producer consumer. Hope you enjoyed our tutorial. All the codes are in the GitHub. Uh, the link is in the description. If you like our tutorial, do like and subscribe. Uh, if you have any doubts, do Put it in the comment section. I will read it and will try to answer it if possible. So thank you for listening to our small tutorial.